There's a wrong idea that goes around in the sense that, uh, well, yes, God did create heaven, he created earth, he created man and woman, introduced him into earth, but afterwards he kind of retired. And he let men just go along by themselves and he doesn't intervene in the history of, of mankind. Well, that's absolutely a wrong idea. God does intervene and as in the same manner that he's constantly accompanying us in our daily lives <clears throat> and uh, taking care of us, of each one of us, he also always intervenes in the history of mankind through his grace, um, inspiring new saints. For example, during the times of the organization and the structuring of the uh, Middle Ages, Many saints, uh, he brought forward many saints uh, that participated and took a very important role of the modeling of the Christian civilization. Salve Maria, um, Father Juan, and welcome to our program, Saints for Us. And today we're going to speak about one of those saints, Saint Elijah. He was born in uh, near Limoges in France in the year 588 from Roman parents. And uh, his father perceiving he had an unusual talent for all type of manual crafts, sent him to study with uh, the noted uh, goldsmith called Abo, that was the uh, master of the mint in Limoges. Afterwards, uh, St. Elijah worked under the uh, ro royal treasurer, who um, suggested to the king, King uh, Clotaire, to uh, commission St. Elijah the construction of a throne. He, uh, the king wanted a very beautiful, splendorous throne for himself. And uh, he, hand, he gave uh, St. Elijah all the uh, necessary gold and precious stones for the construction of the throne. St. Elijah was such a, a skillful smith uh, that he uh, not only built one with the material that the king had given him, but he constructed two magnificent thrones for the king. King Clotaire was very impressed, not only with St. Elijah's ability as a smith, but uh, he was much more impressed with his honesty, with his virtues. And so he invited St. Elijah to come to the court. He named him the uh, uh, master of the mint, which in that case was kind of a, a minister of finance or secretary of treasure, if you want. And he even uh, brought him in into his household. The idea of a saint uh, making a throne for the uh, monarch and contributing with his art to royal pageantry kind uh, probably will um, contradict the mentality of a so-called modern sympathizers of a type of simplicity that think that um, the, everything should be done without any type of grandeur, without any kind of splendor, even the celebration of the liturgy. After the death of uh, King uh, Clotaire, his son, King Dagobert, took uh, the friend of his father, Saint Elijah, as his chief counselor. And uh, the influence of Saint Elijah was uh, very much increased when he was able uh, to convince, uh, to induce the king of the Bretons to accept the uh, Frankish authority. So we see the rise of St. Elijah from goldsmith to um, director of currency and, and to a diplomat. St. Elijah had such a influence with uh, King Dagobert that he was able to um, reprimand, to reproach 
the king, not, uh, not only for his morality, that was kind of lax, it was entirely in accord with the uh, teachings of the church, but he even would uh, call his attentions to the uh, slopey way of dressing. And although King Dagobert did deserve the, uh, the criticism, we must say that he had one quality. He ex sympathized with uh, Saint Elijah, and uh, he accepted the uh, reprimand that his holy counselor uh, would give him with submission. Can we imagine something similar happening today? Some of the uh, chief of states having a holy counselor and telling them even that they're not dressing well, what would happen today? Well, it's interesting to think that the uh, Saint Elijah would call the attention of the king even to with a sloppy way of he was dressing. It's interesting to uh, the fact that Saint Elijah corrected the king even for the um, um, kepness of the way he dressed, and he wanted him to dress with distinction and good taste according to his high rank. And this once again may shock these um, so-called modern spirits that think that um, a king or a chief of state must always uh, dress very simply with ordinary clothes and um, they should not be uh, surrounded by uh, the galas that are according to their office. Elijah was a source of edification at, at the uh, court where together with his friend, another saint, Saint Adonius, they led a life according to the uh, Irish monastic rule. In a certain moment, they uh, contemplated the idea of leaving the court and becoming monks, but King Dagobert uh, was very reluctant to let them go. So it was only when the king died that they uh, took advantage of the situation and uh, they left the court and um, entered the priesthood. Uh, a couple of years afterwards, St. Elijah was named Bishop of Mayan. And uh, on arriving to his diocese, he, under, uh, he perceived that uh, most of the uh, inhabitants of the diocese were pagans. So he undertook with um, uh, very uh, conviction um, the difficult task, and we must say he was very successful, the difficult task of uh, evangelizing and the conversion of the, uh, these barbarian tribes. When Saint Elijah uh, was dying, the then queen, Saint Matildes, herself also a saint, made a long journey uh, because she wanted to meet, uh, be with St. Elijah before he passed away. Unfortunately, she arrived one day after he had already delivered his soul. And on arriving, she was led to the uh, place where um, his corpse was being veiled, and she kneeled by the coffin and prayed for a long time. We see one saint praying by the corpse of another saint. It's a wonderful epilogue for a life dotted with marvelous episodes in a time full of marvelous. Thank you very much for being with us in our program Saints for Us. Uh, and in leaving, I give you the blessing of Almighty God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain forever. Salve Maria!